think we are live. Uh, this is Azrael Johnson and Skylark Bruce of Writing Nights. Hello, Hello. everyone. We are at Avenue Arts. Avenue Arts, which is in downtown Canton. And welcome to our Facebook Live. Everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Live. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello, Hi. random people. Hello. They are, they are people who... Uh, Don't stop. They do... Um, the, the children do classes every Thursday. Um, writing nights. Can I take this? Yes, you can take it. And to show you where exactly we are in downtown Canton, because it's raining outside, we're not actually going to go out there at the moment, but you can see Busbin, Busbin parking lot, and then Fronimo's and Culture Coffee and Tasty Waffles. We're at 324 Cleveland Avenue Northwest, and then Oh, oh <laughs> nice. So Azrael is yep. checking out what we're actually doing on yep. Facebook. So yes, you can see the 324 here on the door. And so as you walk in this door, then you'll see our little entryway. And then if you were to go downstairs here at the Kathleen Howland Theater, there are many shows um, on multiple weekends of the month. and. Many of them are quite excellent, so we would love to see everybody at the various shows that happen downstairs, in addition to coming into the actual art gallery. So in this area, we have a lot of the consignment artists, so different knitted and crocheted things. We've got jewelry and wall art as well. And, and people are walking out. Bye, people. Bye. <laughs> There's 3D art as well that hangs on walls. More jewelry. There's wooden pieces. And everything in here is made by local artists. So. Your money goes right back into your local community when you buy things here at Avenue Arts. And there are more people that are leaving. Bye, people. <laughs> and then there's centerpiece art as well. All of this art is adjacent to where we do the Thursday open mic slash workshop slash etc. Um, maybe eventually if people start coming we'll do some kind of podcast but we wanted to give people a preview of what actually is going on in downtown Canton at Avenue Arts hi people if you really really love First Friday or you just want to share your First Friday swag you can buy those t-shirts and hats and sweatshirts here at Avenue Arts this is Ethel's spot and we will probably see Ethel here in a moment Ethel has all kinds of gifts and gift adjacent things, uh, including candles and soaps and perfumes and bath bombs and and here's Ethel herself. <laughs> you want to say hi, Ethel? <laughs> and then Ethel brought her whole crew today, who are not very. Wave, not very friendly right now. But. <laughs> this is the main counter here at Avenue Arts, and Aswell's going to show us what it's like to work the counter right now. Basically, just sit here for four hours, and sometimes people buy things. But there can be a there's a lot more things for people to buy than what is the uh, you know goes out the door every day. So. So that's part and, of the reason why we want to do. Yes, so the Facebook Live is to poetry. show you what's here, so you definitely want to come here. Yes. Heather Bullock and Michelle Walkus have this spot, and if you recognize Tim Carmody, that is totally Tim Carmody hanging right there on the wall. And then Ellie Simon as well. And then we have Canton Cloth Company. So all of your... Canton and Ohio related swag and Cleveland swag. You've got everything t-shirt related in here. Yes, we are in the 330 Hall of Fame City. We'll get to that later. Do you have any watchers other than me? 
I no, there's only one watcher. No problem. And there, there goes Taylor. She's uh, she's teaching our young minds to be actors and actresses. They are a dramatic bunch, that's for sure. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a good week. And then you can buy greeting cards here as well, created by Gregarious Ginger, Gregarious Ginger, aka Stephen Ostertag. And then more jewelry, and additional wall art, and a chair that is floor art, I suppose. Yeah. All right. Well, it'd be too pretty to sit on. <laughs> yes, it might be too pretty to sit on, but it could display all of your handmade quilts and things like that too. Yes. And more yeah. wall art. And back in this section, there is, of course, a bathroom. So you do not have to leave Avenue Arts to go to the bathroom. It's right there. Absolutely use the bathroom here. And as you're here going, man, I want to know what all the other cool things in Canton are. There's a whole room full of information about other things going on here in Canton and places to visit and cool things to do, specifically downtown Canton related at this section. And then the other side was including such awesome things as the Troll Hole Museum and Alliance and Maslin Museum, the Tap Room, Taggart's. Well, Taggart's is here in Canton. Um, and we can now head upstairs because this building has two floors. Holy shit. Oh my two god! Floors? There's more art? Really? Two floors? Wait, wait. No, it's just, it's only two only floors. Only two floors. <laughs> Actually, there's a two and a half floor as yes, well, but we can't see the, the the and a half floor right now. That's a first Friday thing. Yes. We've got wall art of various types. This wall art is by Ertha, who is an amazing artist of Lithuanian background. And in warm weather, one could, in fact, open up the garage door here on the second floor if one wanted to. Although, uh, Ertha said that she is afraid of heights. <laughs> Ertha is so afraid she... of heights, so we're working on helping her feel comfortable and safe. Yes. We have, a, right. we have uh, two more bathrooms right here. Yes. For people who like to pee. So on the second floor here, unfortunately there's no light right overhead, but there are two bathrooms, a men's and a women's. Yes. But they're each... Uh, only one seaters, so you can use whichever one you feel like on that day. Yes. And then we have Vicky. Vicky, did you want to Facebook Live mention anything about uh, Busy Tat? What do you want me to say? <laughs> Tell us what you do here and what you want people to know. I am an artist. I make um, artwork, mostly pet themed artwork. I do a lot of pet portraits right now. I'm actually working on a commission to do some signs. For Muscle and Brewing Company and the Brewing Company coming to downtown Canton. Awesome. All of their beers are going to be named after fish, so they asked me to draw, uh, paint pictures of fish for their beers. So I did what kinds of fish? Um, this is a rock bass getting ready to do a yellow perch. Um, Will there be a piranha beer? I don't believe there's a piranha beer. No piranha. Because that one would Not have yet. that would have quite a bite to it. Next will be the yellow perch, and uh, I'm not sure what the others are going to be. Right. Well, thank you very much, Vicki. We're going to head on down the hallway. I did check the door. We could go over to the cold cell. Cool. Cold so, yeah. I don't want everybody else to know. There's always a lot of this. Okay. All right. In this section, this other room directly adjacent to the top of the stairs, this is positive art, which is art by artists who are HIV positive. So this is a whole collective in here with lots of really amazing, unusual pieces. So, yay. Fist bump. <laughs> <laughs> There's cards available here as well. These are a different style and aesthetic than the ones downstairs, which are snarkier, and these are more fine art related for the most part. I bet you didn't think you'd see a whole cone full of costume jewelry, but here it is. She's quite aghast at that. I think this is foil. Yeah, this foil 
is on another sort of cone or tree shaped like structure. Foil flowers? Yes, or? those I believe are silver paper foil flowers. I'm not even sure that piece is for sale. And then there's smaller art. Look, only $18 for that piece. Holy crap, that's amazing. Um, uh, okay, and then this wall of positive art is actually, um, I am forgetting her name. I feel terrible. Um, the artist who previously had oh, uh, a spot here. Carol. Carolyn, yes. Yeah, Carolyn. In fact, Carolyn Jacob Photography. This particular piece is called Dreaming of Green. So if you also are dreaming of green, you should totally come and buy this piece that is only $25. Awesome. So, yes, um, Carolyn decided to refocus and not use the entire room. Um, she'd been here for many, many years. And um, when Positive Arts moved into this room, they said, oh, we can totally share this wall with you. So it's a very good cooperative effort between different artists. She's got entire boxes full of pictures of flowers and pictures of angels. She's a very skilled photographer with a classic style that a lot of people do appreciate. So these are, if you do not know Canton, the uh, Pegasus right here is in the um, lobby slash atrium area of the Canton Cultural Center just up the road on Market. The courthouse angels are right here that is at the uh, center of Canton at Cleveland and Tusk, and that's a different view of the same place with more flowers. All right, so let's head down. Actually, let's look over the atrium area down to the first floor, and we can say hi to Ethel again if Ethel wants to wave hi. <laughs> so one of the coolest features of this building is that you can see so much more from above, and you're still part of the whole art gallery. These are more of Vicky's pieces. Busy tat. The Studio 528 is going to be a new addition, which I am hoping will be ready by first Friday in April. But we are eagerly anticipating the art, beauty, and consulting and photography that this artist does. I think we met her briefly a couple yes. of weeks ago. So I believe she does massage therapy in addition to other healing arts. I think her name is Tiffany, but I don't Tiffany? know. Tiffany? Yeah, that sounds about right. And then this space right here, Wood Wonders, which we can see here on the door. This is Lois Lee, who I've known for about eight and a half years, who is actually now our neighbor on the street we live on, too. She does absolutely phenomenal things. And this is just her studio This space. is just, yeah, this is just the, the sales space. Looks like one of her pieces actually sold that was $10. So she has a lot of art that's very affordable. This one's $45. I'm not sure. Okay, that's probably Amish Kids Down in uh, Holmes County would be my first thought. Uh, depending on what breed of dog you are most enraptured with, you can definitely find that breed in a uh, cutout with the same shape. Ornaments are definitely one of Lois's things. She does have her actual um, saws and other um, necessary machinery for her creations over on the other side, the, the two and a half floor. So, one last dog on our way out. Say hello, dog. Woof, woof. All right. And then these closet doors we actually put to use every first Friday because right here is where we put up the uh, laminated paper um, for people to write um, 
a group poem. So everyone gets to add a line. We try to have a theme every month just to get people started. All right, these very shiny curtains are made out of VHS tapes. I made those in addition to these things right here. So the blue bag is made out of plastic tablecloths. The gray bag is plastic bags. The black sparkly one is VHS tapes. Plastic tablecloths, plastic tablecloths, and of course, more VHS tapes. There is a garland slash scarf across the top that I made. And several writing nights anthologies. Azra, did you want to say anything about these anthologies? Um, yes. So, these two anthologies here are part of our uh, new Lit Mag series of The Wayward Sword. We have, uh, issue 1, Volume 1, and then Issue 3, Volume 1. <coughs> um, we... <coughs> one more. Excuse me. All right. Um, we actually have started our volume two. It is technically released. We don't have any copies of it. Um, we're working on getting those copies. But anyway, every volume has a theme. So this one is dangerous submissions, the submissions that are challenging the status quo, so to speak. And this one is uh, all the uh, poems related to resistance and uh, getting people to think differently. It also served as our grand tournament 2017 anthology. Uh, down here we have uh, our first release by Jacob King, hopefully whoop, first whoop. of many. Uh, Jacob King is a local poet hero. Um, Who he, lives in Lima now, he but he was, had lived in Canton. He lives in Lima now. Uh, his wife, Carla Thompson, will actually be featuring for us April 13th whoop, whoop. at the local... Writing um, Nights. Writing Nights. Um, right here is my uh, visual slash poetic release hack came out in 2015, I think. Um, and then right here, in my latest book, uh, the third book of the Dragon's Bane series, The Black God. It's kind of hard to read the, the cover, but. But yeah, hold it still. There we go, yes. There is so much to discover on this cover. It's so much better appreciated in person. Yes, so you should definitely come down to check it out. We sometimes have the books with us when we come to, when we go to the shows. Uh, this is the Grand Tournament three anthology that was a few years ago. I don't remember, 2013, 2014, maybe 15. Yep. Um, All right, and then we can actually go into the gallery here. We've got lots and lots and lots of books, some of which, as you can tell, are used books and are magazines, which we have for sale. A lot of these were donated to us because we're just trying to get attention for our baby bookstore here. Yes. Uh, Azra, do you want to talk about the poetry books that you have published? Yes, the poetry books we've published, Writing Nights, um, international, national authors. Uh, we've been in contact with people since 2012, uh, just releasing books. It started out just books from people that I liked, and then kind of expanded from there. Like, can't say I don't dislike anybody, but you know, it's not about whether I like them or not, it's about whether the poetry's good. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, people from far away as India with books with us. Um, Didn't you get some submissions from Russia as well? Maybe. I don't think I accepted those ones. but Because um, you don't read Russian well enough to say? Well, no. he. I'm, <laughs> I'm kidding you. I'm kidding you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, more of the Dragon's Bane series books. Um, a lot of magazines, so people who like to scrapbook, you should definitely come down on First Friday. We offer or any them, other time. Or any other time. I'm because just the whole gallery is open Tuesday through Saturday. Um, the Tuesday through Friday is 12 to 8, and then Saturday it's 10 to 8, isn't it? Yes. What I was getting at, though, is we sell the magazines for a dollar each. But... Cool. And I think we are back. Yes, it says live. Yay! So we are back. Uh, what were we talking about? Um, I was just about to mention that if, when you are here, you wanted to sign up to get Ray Knight's information emailed to you, you can definitely do that by sending our guest book. We've also got flyers about upcoming events such as the April 13th Take the Night Off Showcase, which we do every single second Friday. Yes. Oh, and we have a uh, special offer for people into Weight Watchers. Uh, we have this um, Overcoming Stress pamphlet. 25 cents. Mm -hmm. 
And then we also have information on the upcoming Grand Tournament 2018. Did Azra want to mention more about yes. the Grand Tournament? Uh, so every every year up until now, we've been doing Grand Tournaments where you... It's, a grand Tournament is the annual contest Writing Nights puts together to find our next full-length book release person. Um, so before, we would have people submit writ written manuscripts, and then we would pick the best five, and then that person, though those five people would go on and perform to win the book deal. This year, we want to do it differently. We want to take the stage performances, and then the best stage performances will judge their written performance afterward, and then the best scores from there will go on to the finals. So we're trying to flip the script a little bit. Um, some people might not be as good with writing, but they're excellent performers. We want to give those people a chance to shine as well as, you know, makes make a name for themselves, so to speak, with their own book. We've had uh, one of our um, one of our past winners is still selling books from his original uh, release. So I mean, you, it's definitely a good way to get your name into the ether of poetic people. And to have another book and under your belt that is very well produced yes. that is easy to sell. Yes. So the sky is the limit, basically. With, as far as poetry goes. We have some discount poetry right here mm -hmm. in this section. Yes. And I think um, we have some Ray Knight's buttons up yep. here. Uh, these are Dragon's Vein buttons. Oh, Dragon's Vein buttons. Yes, yes. Dragon's yes. Vein Let's button. look at these a little closer. So. Because these are totally epic. Yes. Uh, Arrowhead. Arrowhead. Are they music? Or Arrowhead Arts? Arrowhead what? Boutique, something Arrowhead, along Arrowhead oh, Boutique. Collectibles, they're, they're, Vintage Shop, something along those lines. We will have to direct you to them on Facebook to find out their full official name. Yeah, they're, they're a little, there's like a block and a half north of us right now yep. where we are. They're at uh, Cleveland and Fifth. Fifth, yeah, I think so. All right, so we've got some more uh, poetry published by Writing Nights. Yep, these are four plays. These are for new authors. So if you're like, I want to be a published author, but I don't. No, I've only I, got four pieces right now right. that I'm proud of. <laughs> yeah, so you say, hey, writing nice, will you publish these? And I was like, hey, if they're good, we'll publish them. And then we have more used books. These mm -hmm. are the, um, like, uh, these are a lot of, like, the novels. Just throwing the live video. All right, we are now back for the second time. Yes. The other thing I was going to show you is, yes, we will have T-shirts in your size, because we have quite a few here. Mm -hmm. uh, some additional books of survival, backcountry, yes. more magazines, more magazines, and more magazines. The laptop is not for sale. Yeah, the laptop, the laptop is not for that sale. Anyway. Although if you if you wanted it badly <laughs> enough if you, and you had, you know, way more money than it's possibly worth, then we would sell it to you. Yes. Alright, and then over here you get started on the Sky Cycled Creations section. This is a lot of different hats, which yes hats can be worn in warmer weather, in addition to in colder weather, so um, that's. And we're back for I think this is the fourth time, yeah. third so or fourth, yeah. third or fourth, something like that. But yes, I have poetry that I, is a there's both the longer collection and the shorter collection. So these two are the same book, just different covers, because not everyone's comfortable with the fuck word. And likewise on here, not everyone is cover, comfortable with the shit word, but on the inside, both are exactly the same. And we have... We might actually have something to say about that later. But. Yeah, so we'll have something to say about that later. As far as our thought process on that... How would a gas um, range be made by Waste King we, Universe? I don't know. But we are live again. Oh. Yes, yes. We are live, live from Azrael's phone now because Azrael's Kindle does not connect and I can't figure out how to do a mobile hotspot on my phone yet. So, so yes, uh, I was showing you some of the cool things that I have made. Uh, if you are looking for an eco-friendly Easter basket for your kids, I made this out of plastic tablecloths and some silver beads on our string. And so if you are not wanting to contribute to landfill excess, then this would be the great thing to put knickknacks and candy and such for kids in your Easter baskets. If you're looking for other totally adorable things, such as this uh, little octopus with googly eyes. Yes. And it can, you can hang it on stuff like backpacks and whatnot, thanks to my sister Lisa for that idea. Um, this one is actually trying to be an octopus trying to be a ninja for April Fool's Day. Yes. Because I guess it's kind of dangerous in Octoland sometimes. Right. And. 
Um, I've got other infinity scarves and that sort of thing as well. I realize it's not necessarily season for that right now, but it's never too early to get it for next season when you right. see a great deal. And infinity and, lasts all the time, so. Yes, infinity lasts all the time. <laughs> and other really amazing things that we have here would be shower shoes or flip-flops or whatever you want to call them made out of plastic grocery bags. And some additional baskets made out of plastic tablecloths. Hello, Josh Romo. You are here. here Hi, Josh. How's it going? We've got like f two viewers. We've had four so far. Yay! Awesome! Weird that I'm doing it from my own personal account and people are actually viewing it. Right. <laughs> if you know any preemies or newborn babies, I've got lots of hats that are just the right size for those little ones. And then we do have several blankets. This one is one of those scrap yarn blankets that uh, is hey. heavy and will keep you quite warm on cold nights. Hey, your sister Rachel's here. My sister Rachel! Hi there! How you doing? And this one is more of a lap blanket for two people. So that would keep two people quite warm as well. Oh, the other one is single bed size. So you could certainly, if you're sitting on the couch, use that for two or three people as well. Mm -hmm. This is a basket with a handle. So that is something if you wanted the kids to run around in the yard and collect the Easter eggs and whatnot and put them in there, that would be fabulous. Got plastic bag dish scrubbies or coasters, depending on your preference. And don't put them on the oven. Yeah, don't put them on the oven. Don't put them in the dryer. Highly not recommended. <laughs> if you need to keep your feet warm and your feet are about size 5 or 6, these would be perfect for you. Rachel says she's doing good. How are you doing? Good, good. Um, Rachel, are you in Canton now or are you coming up tomorrow? It's going to be a delay. You might, oh, as well, you, okay. might as well, you might as well keep talking. Okay, okay. <laughs> and this is another basket. Um, so if you maybe have like one kid who wants to walk around and, and hold the basket while another kid puts the Easter eggs in, that's totally fine. And I know everyone wants more amazing, easy ways to clean their house. So these are mop wigs that you would put on, like, on a Swiffer mop. And these are made out of regular yarn. You can toss these in the washing machine and reuse them over and over and over. And I made them these exact colors because they will show dirt less than something that was like white or pastel. Mm. However, if anybody wants to um, do a custom order, I do take custom orders. Mm. She's coming tomorrow. Coming tomorrow. All yes. right. <laughs> For those of you who are yoga people... We've got yoga mat carriers as well. These are made out of the plastic bags. Yoga mat's not included. Yeah, yoga mat's not included. Unless, unless you want to give me like 10 bucks. Yeah, unless you want to actually pay for them. <laughs> so um, there's various uh, colors and lengths of yoga mat carriers. This I guess you would call an elbow bag because most folks don't put it on their shoulder. But... Uh, this is made out of plastic tablecloths, and the inside has this nice colorful liner, so you do not lose your pens and other small things. If your team colors are green and black and yellow, this infinity scarf is totally for you. And then this uh, rainbow shawl is for sale. If you like fringe, but you're not into rainbows, this uh, brown and cream is also available. And then this one is more of a just around the shoulders deal. So This one always likes to fall off the uh, hanger, but wouldn't fall off you. Yes. It'll cling because it's made yes. out of yarn. And then this one is white and, or, sorry, it's a cream and gray, but I'm pretty sure you can tell that on the video. Yes. And this is a nice rustly cloak made out of, guess what, VHS tapes. VHS tapes. It's kind of a Game of Thrones, Jon Snow kind of thing. Kind of, yes. If he was more about stealth. Yes. So this uh, rainbow infinity scarf can be wrapped around you about six different ways. And depending on how big you are, about three different Three different times, times. yes, yes. And this I originally created as a wine bottle carrier. 
um, but would hold many other things of oblong sizes as well. This elbow bag also has a nice orange liner inside. This one's actually on clearance for $20. Nice. Only $20. Oh my gosh. So, if your kids or anybody else, not even kids necessarily, um, are into Anna and Elsa from Frozen, these hats are exactly perfect for adults size heads and kids often have only slightly smaller heads so this would still fit. How much would you let them go for? Well, <laughs> these are currently at $25 but if you're going to buy both then I'm sure I can cut you a deal. So yeah, instead of paying $50 I probably would let them go for 40 if yeah. you were buying both. Jack, uh, Jack Smith says, very nice work, I love the rainbow infinity scarf. Nice! And I can make smaller sizes of that rainbow infinity scarf as well if someone wanted one that wasn't quite as long. Hmm. Special orders. Special orders. Yes, for all special orders, I do ask for half of the cost up front. Um, that is, of course, to weed out people who are just going to uh, have they make something and never, and never pay. But every single time someone's done a special order, they end up actually paying the whole cost up front anyway because it's actually less work for them. Mm -hmm. um, these are fingerless gloves, matched set, and... I also have some that are taller, as in they go further up your arm. Rachel asks, can Chris have the Elsa hat and I have the Anna one, lol? If they've got $40 to pay for them, then absolutely. I don't care about the gender identity of whoever's going to be wearing my stuff. That's your business, not mine. Yes. So um, these are longer... Um, Fingerless gloves go further up the finger and then further down the uh, arm as well. I have friends who deliver papers and they requested some just like this because as they're throwing the papers, they need to have their fingers free, but then they don't want their um, coat to ride up almost to their elbow and then they have cold arms. So these are very handy, especially for people who are active out in uh, cold weather. I had to step back a little bit because uh, I needed to plug in so we don't lose the live feed again. And then these are leg warmers. They look very similar to those uh, fingerless gloves because they're actually meant to be a matched set. So fingerless gloves and leg warmers so you can totally look cohesive and all pulled together as you're wearing things that I made. And that's about it. There's a few other items here that are on clearance, um, so you can totally find out what those are when you come in. And let's see here. Oh, Ashley, did you want to show everybody the question? I do, but I don't want the, the, the thing to go away. Um, all right, here. So during the month, we have a question on this board here. The, the coat usually isn't there. Um, this, this is, what do you like to read? Um, the uh, Sometimes the question is, what kind of books should we get? Uh, or what what, what authors should we what authors should we sorry about that um, what authors should we have here etc so if you have a favorite author um, or if you are an author and you are your own favorite which of course you are yeah um, then definitely get in touch with us about who you want to see mm -hmm. uh, what sort of books you would like to publish as well because we're always looking for new writers of many kinds Oh, uh, Jessica, our uh, niece, said she needs a blue writing night shirt. What size, Jess? Yeah. Well, we can, you can message that to us later if you don't want that to be on Facebook Live. Cause yes. That's, <laughs> you don't necessarily need to share that with the whole world. Yes. But we could probably bring that up on Sunday if you have the money for that. I'm going to, sw I'm going to see if we can switch the camera. Yes, we can. Sweet. Because I want to keep it plugged in, but I want to keep us both on camera if I can do it. You, you can't, can't turn, turn your phone, phone while live. Switch. Okay. So, um, hold on a second. I have an idea. Well, I do have a, uh, yes. one of the um, easels. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. The original idea was to have the easels while we had like a... Excuse me.
sorry for technical difficulties. Yep, we're new at this whole Facebook Live thing, so yeah. we're glad to have anybody watching, honestly. And, uh, <laughs> how very will you have good of you? I'm a little confused by that, Jack. How Willow of good? I don't know what that is. I, I'm sorry, is Willow some Willow was somebody in Buffy, right? Yeah, but that's not... I don't know. Willow Rosenberg is in Buffy. Okay, we're down here at the floor. Yes. Maybe we should get chairs. How much per t-shirt? Um, uh, $12? 12, yes, $12. Or, or $7 if you buy them at the show. Yes, because we asked for $5 admission at each show. So, um, we discount the shirts to seven so that uh, everything is affordable and as was bringing chairs over so we can sit in those and be more visible without having to be all the way up on our knees on the floor all right so, so how's everybody um, doing today hi yeah because we're totally watching all these comments yes. because we're newbies like that right and everyone, like, people are hearting at us. I don't know if this is, like, different persons or just, <laughs> just a bunch of hearts all I don't know, but heart away. <laughs> yes, we like hearts. <laughs> Jack. Willow of Good, you said that you are your own favorite author. Referring to Willow being asked who is the best magician is. Okay. The, from the movie Willow. Oh, okay, I I'm afraid I have not seen that yet, Jack, so thank you for the reference, and I'll have to look that up later. Um... There, were there other things about Ray Knight's events that you wanted to mention before we switch to any different topics? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Thursday the Thursday open mic is kind of why we started posting this. It's just me. I'm not sure what you mean, Jessica. It's just me about what? I don't know. Anyway, getting back to Thursdays. Anyway, yeah, so Thursdays, um, I, I work downstairs where we showed you Ethel on the other Facebook Live. Uh, pop over to the Writing Nights Facebook page for the first three times. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because we had some technical difficulties, so we're working it all out. Yeah, the, the, the Kindle doesn't connect to the internet, and... Um, we tried. And I can't get Mobile Hotspot to work on the phone for some reason. But anyway, um, yeah, so... I figure I'm there for four hours a week. Why not have people be there with me? So, well, thank you for hearting us. Yes, thank you, Jess. That's a lot of hearts. <laughs> it right? is. I'm not sure if it just like throws a thousand hearts at us every time one person clicks a heart. Is that like a heart attack or what? Is the purple and white crocheted looking thing a skirt or a lampshade? Either way, it's cool looking. To answer your question, Jack, it's actually a skirt. It's probably about the size of a 10-year-old child. Um, I do not currently know the measurements of it, but I... I need some water. Okay, I was going to get some water. Um, so, yes, that was a, a test version to see how it would look if I did it. Because most of the floofy skirt type things made with that type of yarn are made for babies, so I want to make something a little bit larger. Um, at home I have the next one that I am working on that is for an adult, so I made it according to her measurements. So that is another thing that I'm able to do, although I'm about out of that purple yarn, but I do have some golden and some red, so if anybody wants something of that same style made for you specifically, then just let me know. Or if somebody wants to, like, buy their own yarn and then send it? Yes, yes. That that particular type of yarn is called fantasy yarn, and it was real popular for a hot minute when everyone was doing all those scarves, decorative scarves made out of it. But if you can find it um, and you wanted to um, have me make something with the yarn that you purchased, of course I would deduct whatever the ordinary cost that I would have for materials would be, and then you would be paying for my time. Yeah, so... But anyway, Thursdays. So, yeah, we were doing uh, open mics every Monday at Cultured Coffee. We kind of sort of branched into having features, and then um, it kind of died out. So we figured we'd try the open mic thing again. Uh, looks like Jessica... Just asked, can you make stuff out of Easter grass? If so, I have some for you. Jess, I've never tried making anything with Easter grass, but I'd be glad to give it a try. Mm. If nothing else, I can always put it in the beanbag chair. Yeah. Oh, 
Did you show the bang bang there? Okay. Uh, no. Um, I, I have other bag. things that I am working on building up slowly to be stuffing for a beanbag chair. The one I'm working on right, or the main thing I'm working on right now is um, plastic straws. So especially as I am picking up trash in my neighborhood, um, the strap, the straws that are intact, I save, and I'll be chopping them into small little circles to be stuffing for a beanbag chair. Um, so if you have a dead beanbag chair that you wanted me to fill, and I'll take the cover off your hands, then that can definitely be accomplished. Yes. Yeah, we don't want any more turtles. Well, we but want we want turtles. We, we don't want, want turtles we, with turtles their, with their straws noses stuck in, the nose. stuck in yeah, nose was stuck with straws. Yeah, that's oh, well, that's that, that's probably the most disturbing video on the internet, probably. Oh no, there's plenty well, I mean, other really disturbing I ones. I just don't anyway, that one. going back going back to anyway, Thursdays, what you Thursdays. had in mind for Thursdays. So I'll yeah, get some water. Yes, do that. Um, oh, she said, sounds good, sounds great. I'll have it for you Sunday. So cool. awesome. So Thursdays. Um, yeah. So we kind of wanted. Oh, I personally kind of wanted to get back into do open doing open mics. Um, we've had a few people attend. It's mostly just been me sitting behind the counter entering in new books and magazines for the bookstore, but, um... I don't have a beanbag chair, but I have a lot of grass. <laughs> Thank you, Jess. You should try to sell that. That's That's got some good street value. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so... I figured four hours, people come by. So, this is what this partially is. Um, hopefully next week we'll have some people come in and be like, hey, we have people here, and we can do poems and stuff. And we also probably will do poems tonight. Mm -hmm. maybe, oh, yeah. Maybe, oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe a poem or two each. But, yeah. Especially um, if there are specific requests from our audience, we would be glad to do those pieces or whatever we have in mind. Yes, definitely. Um, uh, as far as writing night's events, um, just the basic... Uh, Will I we, go live for you, Thursday? Today is Thursday, Today right? is Thursday. Yes, we, we'll, we're... <laughs> gonna try to do like every Thursday. If mm -hmm. it's just me, I'm not gonna, I probably won't go live, but if it's me and someone else, I'll go live and mm -hmm. it'll be a fun time. Uh, our, one of our current uh, writing nights patrons slash friends, um, Daria comes out sometimes. Was Daria here earlier today? No, Daria wasn't here. Okay. Otherwise we might have been I thought Daria had something else going on today. Yeah, she's so. got a meeting yep. or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, Future of Writing Nights things, um, the Grand Tournament coming up, excited for that. Yay! Um, a whole weekend of activity instead yes. of one evening, like right. it was in the past. Yes. Um, Jennifer Brown is watching. Hello, Jennifer. How are you? I haven't seen you in a while. We're supposed to wave, so hi, I'm hi. waving. Oh, yeah, yes, yes Jess, yeah, you meant yes. every Thursday, so. Yes. Mm -hmm. As long as we've got one other person besides me here, we will go live. And I mean that, and the, they want to be on the camera. So, I think we had some other topics we were going to cover a little bit. Yeah. Um, what did you want to? What do we want to start with? We can start with the. Uh, uh, shoot, I feel like there was something that you want to talk about, like with, with workshopping itself. Um, as far as the nature of workshopping, um, <clears throat> um, if you're interested in our workshop philosophy. It's <coughs> share your share your stuff and we give you something constructive to work on, like to and then something we like about the piece in general. Uh, we don't want to tell you how to write, we just want to encourage you to write and kind of give you feedback on something that you've written. Um, this usually applies for poetry, but if you've got some kind of fiction that is really like you really committed to it and there's no stopping you now we will definitely listen to a chapter or two and give you some feedback for it um as far as sharing that on the live stream itself we could do that or we could not um thinking this might turn into something where we like live stream for a set amount of time and then have stuff afterward if somebody doesn't want to share on camera, which is fine. We don't want people to be on camera if they don't want to be. Um, uh, that's the basics. The The rest of it is just open mic. Uh, down in the area where we just saw... Just open mic. Just open mic. Just open mic. A lot of times uh, pieces become their 
best selves through the open mic process. Yes. So um, if you want a piece that you've just written to become its next version, then oftentimes uh, sharing it in front of other people, even if they are not offering you specific suggestions, can be helpful for you to figure out where your piece needs to go. Right. Yeah. Practice makes perfect in more than one way. Hey, Levi, I haven't talked to you in a while. Levi? Who's Levi? Remind Le me. Uh, Levi, you never met Levi. He's someone I knew in, in Wisconsin. If you are interested, try live me. Try, oh, you, oh, you mean that thing you were trying to tell me about? I'm confused. <laughs> we're newbies um, at this, so yeah. we, we do appreciate everyone's help in making this awesome for everybody. Yes. More hearts. We like hearts. Mm. Give us a heart attack. <laughs> Not that kind. Um, oh, uh, Skylark has a show on... Tomorrow. Sorry, tomorrow. Tomorrow. On tomorrow. So, yeah, it's at the Nervous Dog in Akron. It's from 6 to 8-ish, and I will be one of the featured poets. I think there's about six featured poets. Mm -hmm. Let me pull up all of those right now. Um, I know that John Burroughs from Cleveland is one of them, and Sue Flat from Columbus is another. Yes. Um, Atomic Houdini, who we just had on a writing night show. Yay. Um, you can go to the writing night's YouTube uh, page and you can see one of. Yes, yeah, so it's called Nervous Dog Akron Poetry Night. Yeah. Um, and I have never. I didn't actually respond to John Burroughs inviting me to it for some yeah. reason. <laughs> well, you're already gone. So well, yes, yes. It. So it's run by Michael De Benedictus, who is a poet who. This is his. Uh, second time doing this particular monthly show, and so it seems to be going really awesome so far. Uh, yeah. There's going to be Tony Gamblin, Jason Blakely, Synchronicity Moon, uh, Human Host, who is a touring synth musician from New York, so that is intriguing. I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, Human Host will be doing. And uh, Nervous Dog is, of course, a coffee house, so um, you can buy your coffee and tea and hot chocolate and various pastries, and yes, they do have vegan options. And, uh, so yeah, it is definitely from, uh, actually it says 6 to 9, but the last month it ended about 8.15, 8.30. Yeah. So, um, it d just depends on how long each performer goes. Right. And, uh, as far as other shows coming up, of course we have writing nights in two weeks. Yep. Next week on Friday is First Friday. So here in the downtown uh, Canton Arts District, that means that it it's free to get in everywhere. Yes. Uh, it's a self-guided tour of the monthly arts festival kind of thing, and so you can get in for free everywhere. There, are, of course, if you want to buy art, that's not free. Um, but there are often different uh, projects and uh, naked and takes and things like that throughout the arts district that you could participate in um, at no cost. There's always a free movie that's uh, family oriented at the Palace Theater, and it's also free to get into the Canton Museum of Art. Mm -hmm. So I don't recall what their current exhibit is. No. They always have really amazing, um, very polished works of art um, available for viewing there. And uh, then, of course, here on the second floor of Avenue Arts on First Friday, Azrael and I, as uh, Writing Nights, do that group poem there back out in the hallway that we showed you earlier as a way of getting people's minds turning toward um, expressing themselves in a, a poetic format. It need not rhyme, because I almost never rhyme, mm -hmm. and a lot of poets don't necessarily rhyme, or they do only when they want to. And for people who don't know what we're talking about, it's, uh, check back to the Writing Nights page, that's where we started the live stream. Yes, I think it was in segment... Two yeah, I that think I so. showed you that it might have still been at the end it of might segment have been the first, one. The first yeah, one was it was at long. the end of segment one because we had good internet reception until we got, um, into, until we got into this room. So yeah. we started out at the main front door on Cleveland Avenue and then walked through the first floor, up the stairs, and down the hallway to where we are. And once we actually walked into our own gallery, is where we lost the internet. Yeah, so, at least at least on the Kindle. Like yes. A, um, the. I need to figure out how to do hotspot on my phone, and then mm -hmm. we'll start doing that, and then we should have good yeah. service. Yeah, and then we'll have a more cohesive video product for you all. Right. <laughs> so it won't, like, bug out. Although we have more viewers now than we did on the writing nights. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, maybe yep. we'll figure and out And hopefully something. we'll be able to tag me in it as well, so people will be able to see it on my wall mm -hmm. while we're actually talking. Yes. Um, so, yeah, do we want to do any other discussion, or do we... Want to cut it out, well, um, 
our next one, we can ho hopefully cover the topic of um, profanity in art yes. and uh, what that means for different people and um, ways to convey expectations in a particular setting without um, unnecessarily pissing off artists. Yes. <laughs> so tune in next time for something along those lines. Yes. All right. So thank you for viewing. Uh, don't forget to check out Quality is very good right now. Thank you um, for that feedback, Jack. We do appreciate thank that. Thank you. Glad that glad we're coming through. Hey, Anne Hesler. Hi, Anne. <laughs> we were just about ready to finish this video, but we definitely wanted to say hi to Anne. Hello, Anne. We like Anne. We're going to wave because it says wave. Hi. Well, I, I think or, it's, you know, I think it's ocean a waves. We can, we can, we can click a button and we'll <laughs> wave at Anne. Yes, but it's always better to actually wave than yes. to just click a button that says wave. <laughs> Lol, if I can't use profanity, I might as well be muzzled. <laughs> so yes, feel free to chime in on uh, your thoughts on profanity in art, and we'll be glad to uh, read out your thoughts as well, uh, both yes. ones that you've already shared and whatever you're sharing on the video where we're actually discussing the topic. Hey, Peter. Hi, Peter. Peter Gaetano. He came to some shows when we had him at first, or not at first Friday, at uh, Cultured Coffee. Co oh, okay. He's a friend of Johnny Nyman. Neiman. Excellent, Nyman. excellent. Hi, Peter. Good to I, have you here. I think I made a stone joke at you once. A stone joke? Yeah, because Peter means stone. Oh, you just threw that one at him, huh? Mm hmm. Gaetano's Goliath, you know. And uh, also, feel free to leave uh, suggestions for topics you would like us to cover in future. Yeah. Facebook Lives, because we want this to be interesting for you as well, yes. and uh, I know people do enjoy it when we're actually reading their comments out loud while uh, right. there's a, an actual live video going on. And if you ever want to be on the live video with yes. us, just yes. show up on a Thursday between 4 and 7-ish, mm -hmm. and we'll get you on camera. You can read poems, or you can just be funny, or mm -hmm. our only rule is to not, not be, be a, a dickhead. Dick. Hey, we got laughter. There's laughter. What's I'm that? not sure who's laughing at us. But, yeah, we can never uh, tell who's laughing. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure either, but somebody found us funny, so yeah. that's cool. Might have been Peter in the stone thing. Mm-hmm. Azra, did you want to read a poem before we um, end this? Yeah, let's, why don't I read a poem before we end this? Let me go grab it. So we have my books in here as well, mm -hmm. so it makes it more fun. Oh, I'll read this one first. Um, this one I wrote a couple of years ago when I was really having a lot of allergy-related symptoms from the transition from winter to spring. And thankfully this year so far I've been just fine. But uh, this is a poem that I think a lot of people can identify with. It's called Inside Pressure. There's a nod, a knowing sneeze, a shared headache. We'd make a, sh a secret handshake if we weren't already gripping as many tissues as we knew we'd need. Sinus you? Yeah, sinus me too. The vast expanse of winter makes me forget. The allergy-free masses start to cavort in the sunshine and slog in mud instead of slush. I cheer too, and then grab a wad of teepee. Your springtime ballads will be punctuated by my sneeze. Sadly, there is no relief when winter returns for a late snowfall. My sinuses are set on spring. It's the worst of both seasons. The pollen, spores, and dust are out of Pandora's tissue box, propelled with the force of her sneeze. Sinus you? Yeah, sinus me too. All right, Clapter. Clapter? Yeah, you know. Hey, we have Jared. Hi, Jared. How you doing, buddy? Lol, a secret <laughs> handshake and gripping as many tissues as we can. Love it. Okay, so I'm going to be all sappy and read a poem I wrote about Skylark a few years Aww. ago. Uh, this one is from my book, Poemaholic. Poemaholic. Oh, yes. And then the book that that sneeze poem was in is uh, the writing, or sorry, Lake Effect Poetry Team book from a few years ago. Both of which are available in, in here. In places. Mm -hmm. And people are loving us again, so that's awesome. Yay, loves! Okay, so this is a love poem called Solemn Libation. We are two parts of a spondee. We have been this way since day one, sharing times of our own heartbreak to avoid a shitty love song. 
We have been a careful breakdown, and our love has been a black hole, drawing all the light from outer space, and we're a supernova exploding like bombs on D-Day. This is independence. You're drop-dead gorgeous. I've been called a dead man. We've been meant to be since childhood, since I played house with that Sarah, before you became Miss Skylark. There was Andy Andy Andrew before I adopted this name. Call them placeholders. Our matrix facsimiles until our real selves came together, intertwined. I dreamt of you before kismet. I didn't know who you could be to me. I just saw a cute girl who loved me no matter what. But dream girls you have so far surpassed, because you are filled with heartbeats and breathing with soft hair, skin, touch, taste, smell, sight, and these are for me, just like I give all mine to you. Hey. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night, Ethel. Did you like the poem? I don't think she heard it. I don't think she heard it. I feel like she was just hovering. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. All right, so I have one more. It's called The Archaeologist. The happiest person I know lives outside. The happiest person I know makes his bed below a tree every night. His soul cannot be contained by any human structure. His soul expands limitless into the cosmos he looks at a handful of grass and clover and sees archaeological treasure in fact he collects these treasures filling his pockets with his with historic inventory some people see only mundane sprigs and leaves or scoff at his twisted hair and fraying clothes but they do not matter to him he has never met a human he didn't like. Squirrels, birds, and rabbits count him as their own, and his tree dips her branches down, down, down to ensure shelter from critical eyes. When he does amble indoors, it is to the most mind-expanding institution of all, the library. Troves of knowledge on every subject including his beloved archaeology, surround him and the humans he encounters. Perhaps not everything is rosy in his world, but one would never know it based on his perpetual demeanor. Even his search for cigarette butts to smoke is buoyed by a fervent optimism. He has solved the Buddhist 84th problem because he does not desire to have no problems. Some Westerners say that happiness is an inside job, and most people are as happy as they make up their minds to be. I don't know if he made up his mind, or if psychosis made it for him, but I know there are far worse reputations to have than to be Nelson, my neighbor, the happiest person I know. Whew. All right. Does Azure want to give us another um, piece before we so. go home? Yeah, I think so. Um, so, all right, so you mentioned archaeology. So I wanted to uh, read Ancestral Memories, which is about sort of... Archaeological cavemen. times. <laughs> Archaeological times, cave people. Um, I mean, I'm going to need a drink because I do voice things with this one. Hmm. In the beginning, there was no love, only cliffs. Thok stands with Oog on the edge of a cliff. Thok turns to Oog and says, Me can fly. Oog replies, No, you not fly. Thok says, Me show you. Thok jumps off of the cliff, and instead of flying, he falls like a rock. Oog remembers this, and while he does not have the presence of mind to tell his children he loves them, when he brings rock... Ak and Oog Jr. to the cliff, he recoils in remembrance, and they pick up the nonverbal signals, and the ancestral memories are committed. Oog the Third is afraid of cliffs. His father remembers as his father moved away from the cliff. Oog composes the first song, and while it is not about love, it has a similar message. Stay away, cliffs, you fall, you die. Oog the Third's children learn the song, and it evolves. Oog Four sings, Stay away, Cliffs, you fall, you die. Ag sings, Cliffs bad, you fall, you die. Arg sings, 
Cliff's no good, you won't fly, you not live. Thousands of generations follow, thousands of generations learn thousands of lessons, pass on thousands of memories through experience or by words. When the early humans learned to pass on their songs of warning, these songs became poetry. Oog 2000 wrote the first haiku, Stay away from cliffs. Gravity is a killer. You want to try to fly? You die. Oog 2500, a.k.a. Shakespeare, wrote the first sonnet. But now a cliff represents love, and the falling might not kill you, but it'll hurt like hell. All of us are now sharing memories from our ancestors. The electric shocks of remembered movements carry on. They find their way through our genes into sperm and egg, combining, at last intertwining. There may be the occasional Oog 2675 who forgets that cliffs are bad, but there are parachutes now for base jumping. Oog 2701 is heartbroken and filled with pain of unrequited love. He replaces the cliff with a building ledge. He jumps and remembers what Oog 1 learned long ago. Cliff's bad. You fall. You die. Hmm. So, hello to Becky. I think you might be gone by now. And then hello to Tori, who is, who is actually a local. Yes. Um, oh, that reminds me. Tori, I need to connect with you later about some jewelry stuff. Yeah, so hopefully Tori sees that. Um, I think that's probably it for us. Yeah, I think that's it for right now. Next week, uh, we will do this again. I, well, at least I will do this, hopefully. I and don't know what you're doing on Thursday. Yeah, I am probably working till 5, mm -hmm. so hopefully I can stop in um, and do some stuff before going off to Qigong. Right. So, uh, thank you, for everyone who was watching, and make sure to check out the Writing Nights bits where we went around the Avenue mm -hmm. Arts. Yep, um, and come out to Nervous Dog tomorrow. Come out to Nervous Dog tomorrow. Come out to Writing Come out. Come up here first Friday and go to the local on April 13th um, to check out our features, Carla Thompson, Aurora Melman, and Michael Salinger. Um, and as there will be an open mic afterwards. Uh, we ask either $5 suggested donation or 10 used books. Um, and books, not magazines, definitely. Um, magazines have, are cool, but we, we already have, have a lot. We so have a metric, this is intended to be a bookstore, not a magazine store. Yeah, we have a metric fuck ton of magazines. We do not need any more at the moment. <laughs> I like, I like, all right, all right. Unless you take 100 off our hands, then you can give us 10. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Uh, the best time to write is? No. The best place to write is? You. The best person to write is? Here. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, and good night.